What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a free tool that can use artificial intelligence in order to generate like HDRI skyboxes or backgrounds for use in your 3D models. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this is a tool from Blockade Labs. And basically what it is, is it's an AI generator that allows you to quickly generate skyboxes in the background um, of your scenes. So you would basically import these as kind of like an HDRI or something like that. Now, one thing to note about this is this does seem to be um, targeted more at like the gaming type um, sphere more than like architectural or something like that. So um, this tool, what it does is it basically allows you to put in a prompt and you can generate different skyboxes, right? So this is Blockade Labs page, but then specifically we're looking at the skybox.blockadelabs.com site right here. And basically what this is, is you can see this kind of like preview in here. If you click on the auto pan skybox, it's gonna pan through here, but this is going to generate um, these different skyboxes using prompts that you generate. And so if you look at this, and you can kind of toggle the UI off if you just want to look at this in general, but if you look at this, um, this is basically like a lot of the other AI tools that we've looked at in the past where it's got a place in here to put in a prompt. And so what that prompt is going to do is that's going to allow you to describe a scene. And notice how when you click in here, it's gonna give you some instructions like this. Um, but basically what it's going to do is it's going to allow you to describe a scene pick a style and then generate. And I will tell you, I am definitely not the best at generating prompts or anything like that. I haven't practiced it a lot. So um, we'll see what we can come up with though. Okay, and so what you're gonna do is you're gonna type in here and you're going to describe um, your your scene that you wanna generate or the skybox that you wanna generate. So in this case, I'm gonna type in something like a lake high up in the mountains surrounded by tall, snowy peaks. And then you can select any of these different options in here. We'll take a look at some of these others in a second, but if we click on generate, what that's going to do is that's going to use AI and it's going to generate an actual scene um, using your prompt or an actual skybox. It's basically gonna be at like a 360 degree image that you could then import into your models. And note that this takes just a little while to generate, but notice how if I look at this, this has generated basically what I've described. And it's kind of interesting in the fact that it added in like uh it, it it added in like a little town over here on an island other things like that but it did a pretty good job of generating this 3d image and so when you click on the remix this option basically what it's going to do is it's going to give us the ability to change some things about this image right so if we click on remix this what it's going to do is it's going to kind of use this as a base but then let's say that we wanted this to have a different style so for example let's say that we were to drop down and we were going we were to pick something like fantasy lands and click on remix this what it's going to do is it's going to take this image and it's going to redo it in this other style all right and so once this is done notice how you can kind of like fly around and look around and it kept kind of the general look in here but notice how it's now in this fantasy lands style rather than the other style so you can use this to kind of adjust the style in your scene like this and if we download this notice how it downloads it as kind of a 360 degree jpeg image like this. Okay, and so just real quick, let's go ahead and jump over into Blender and we wanna bring this in as kind of the background, right? So we wanna go into the shader editor and um, we wanna go into our world settings rather than our object settings. And we just wanna do a shift A and add an environment texture node in here, drag that over and then click on the option for open We'll go ahead and double click on this in order to bring it in. And so notice what the, what it's doing is it's brought this in and it's using it as kind of the background environment inside your scene. And if you wanted to, you could also add a texture coordinate node and a mapping node in here. So we're just gonna drag the mapping in here. We'll drag generated into our vector. And now we can use this in order to rotate this image. And so you can see how this is kind of working as your HDRI background in here. Now, obviously there's some issues with the camera not being on the ground right here, which we might be able to solve by um, creating like a dome or something like that. But just in general, that's how you can bring this 
into Blender. Let's jump back in though and take a look at uh, some more things about this tool. All right, so this gives you a ton of different options. We'll take a look at a couple more of those in a second. One thing I do wanna point out about this though um, is this does have a little bit of an issue um, depending on what you're trying to do in that it tends to put things kind of in the foreground, right? So you've got like trees and other things like that. A lot of the time you really don't want those until they're like way off in the background over here. Um, this has a tendency to put them kind of close to your camera, which um, can really be kind of problematic when you bring things in and try to use this from a scaling standpoint in your uh, 3D models. So that is one kind of limitation in here. But um, again, I mean, just the images that this is able to generate are also really cool. So I would say it's at least worth like giving it a try, going in and giving it a look and seeing if you have, seeing if it can get you anything close to what you're looking for. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and let's take a look at some of these other settings. So I'm gonna jump over to the create new and notice how we've also got the ability in here. Um, if we click in here, let's say that we were to do like a sci-fi or a cyberpunk. The cyberpunk is the example that I have seen from people, but basically what it does, I think I'm actually gonna go with uh, sci-fi just to see what it does. But um, what we've got is we've got this tool over here. You can actually like draw in shapes, right? So say you wanted like some skyscrapers or something like that, right? So we're just gonna put in a big shape like this, maybe another one over here. And I'm not sure, I think, yeah, you can kind of rotate around like this. So basically what you can do is you can draw in some general shapes like this um, in order to kind of control what this is going to generate. Now, that being said, once you kind of draw these in, the way that it interprets those is kind of up to the tool itself. But if I type in something like sci-fi city with skyscrapers and fog like this and I uh, click on the option to generate what that's going to do is that's going to go through and it's going to use this input that we've drawn in here in order to kind of like try to add elements in our scene and so if you look at this result notice how it has some general buildings that were kind of placed in that area where you drew in those boxes right so if you were to click on this notice how those are still in here but it actually like generated these buildings in here using this tool which is actually pretty cool because it does give you kind of like some control over where these are placed notice how it actually lets you kind of draw these in here now the way that it interprets those um, can kind of vary depending on what your prompt is but that's a really interesting interesting um, thing that you can do in order to get a little bit more control over what's generated. But if you're using this for like a background in a game or something like that, I could see this definitely being extremely valuable. And so again, let's say we wanted to remix this. So you can come in here once you have this in here and you can pick a different style. Right, so let's say for example, we were to pick this CG film and click on remix this. It's gonna go back in and remix this image with that new style. And so you can see how this kind of takes that same thing, but it regenerates it or recreates it using the style. So overall, really cool tool. A couple questions that I have that I haven't quite been able to figure out. And so at least as of right now, I am not seeing anything on here about pricing, like how much the tool costs or is going to cost. I'm also not seeing anything about like licensing or anything like that. I know that's kind of a gray area with uh, AI anyway. So um, it's probably just something that's currently not being spoken about. About, um, but I'm not seeing anything in here about that. So I would say be a little bit careful when you use things like this in your actual projects. But from like a, here's the direction things are going and the way tools might look in the future. I do think this is a really cool tool um, that you can uh, just jump in there and give it a try for free. So I'll link to it in the notes down below. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this tool. Um, if you've given it a try, I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.